All right, folks, we're gonna do a little walk around our, our little farmstead, homestead up here in North Idaho. We've got a little farmhouse up here and 20 acres. We bought this place in 2010. We like to be as self-sufficient as we can, and that means producing most of what we eat. And we do that through hunting, fishing, foraging, and then also growing a big garden. So we're gonna take a, a walk around the place, show you around, I'll talk to you a little bit about how we do that. The house was actually built in 1954, and we have the original plans, I guess, if you could call it uh, that, or work order. It's basically just like a three-page little document that explains what the guys that had it built wanted, and it was up to the carpenters to figure out how to do it. There's no like schematics or, or sketches or plans or anything. It's just literally like, we want a house that's so many square feet and this many rooms build it we're down we're kind of down in a little bit of a swale here and we've got really good water around we've got a, a seasonal stream that runs through which usually dries up around this time of year early july it's usually dry but this year's been super wet uh really really wet up here in the northwest so when we first got this house it was all covered with asbestos shingles and we took all of that stuff off just like two years ago and put cedar shakes over it this front porch here we added all of that there was none of that there used to be a big cottonwood tree that stood right here but it got some sort of disease and died still the house is kind of an ongoing project we have to paint all the trim and everything we've been remodeling for like 10 years <laughs> Our heat comes from a wood stove so we've got our, our wood stack right here we have to cut maybe three cords or so of wood every year it's a really small house it's only like 800 square feet so it doesn't take a lot to heat it now when we first got here when we bought this place um, there was not a stick of insulation in the walls the roof was insulated the floor was insulated but the walls had no insulation at all in it and so when that first year it got uh, pretty cold fairly cold for this part which is say negative 10 uh, Fahrenheit or so and you'd wake up in the morning and there'd be a band of frost around on the floor around the walls and so uh, that next year we punched holes all in between every stud and did blow in insulation and I did all that stuff myself the shop anybody that's seen very many of my bow building videos has uh, has probably seen the inside of this thing here many times but really nice spacious shop it's a, a brick wall um, kind of a block um, wall shop lots of lots of space up in the rafters for bow staves and duck decoys that I haven't used in like forever um, lots of rawhide yeah this is where all the bow making stuff happens most of it anyway I don't have any hours I've spent in this thing but lots so here's Liz's old Subaru that she blew up when I was in British Columbia. We've yet to get, we gotta get rid of that thing somehow. <clears throat> oh. Got little birds flying out of the barn. Got a little tractor here that we use for various things, plowing snow and mowing the fields and all that good stuff. And of course my truck that I rebuilt. So this was, um, this is actually two trucks that I took apart, uh, reassembled into one. And this is a 1991 body, but it's on a 1980 frame. And the, ca the cab and back doors are from a 1980 power wagon. And so it's got a 12 valve Cummins in it, four wheel drive. And I made, uh, made it so that it runs off waste vegetable oil, which these tubs back here, those are full of uh, just french fry grease that I get from one of the gas stations down there in town but I mean I've got enough I don't we live about an hour or so from town and I we're here in Idaho for about nine months out of the year and I bet I go to town twice during that time so like the only places I ever drive are to go hunting uh, and maybe to get firewood and that's it so I don't put very many miles on this thing and so I that fuel right there will last me for like five years. <clears throat> Got 
Got our duck pen. We've got ducks that are running around out here like kind of Liz's project. And then we've got uh, our little greenhouse here where Liz starts all of her seeds. There's not really anything in here right now because everything's been planted out in the garden, but it's got a polycarbonate roof. Um, and then the, the majority of the stuff, these are just old windows that we've scavenged from different places. One of my favorite things to do is in the springtime around here, right around this time of year actually, they, they do uh, like estate auctions or farm auctions and you can find some really good deals on tools and like just stuff like this, old windows and stuff. I picked up, um, like I always like to look at the tools. I got a whole box of C-clamps there a couple years ago for like, I don't know, 15 bucks or something. It's probably like $300 worth of C-clamps. So Liz is the big gardener. She loves gardening, producing the stuff that we eat. And then in the fall during the harvest season, she will harvest all of that stuff and preserve it. She does a lot of canning. We've got a, a freeze dryer that she does uh, a lot of that type of stuff, dehydrating um, and, and preserving our food. Liz has a channel of her own uh, where she does a lot of the gardening stuff, a lot of the food preservation. She's done like canning venison and this fall she'll be doing a bunch more canning and preserving videos. So this garden that we're in right now, this is brand new just this year. Uh, previously, we just had the smaller garden over here, but Liz really wanted to expand and so we took uh, one of the flatter parts of the pasture, tilled it all up, and this is a brand new garden. There's never been a garden here before. And so we're using this plastic weed mat, which I'm not super fond of, but it really helps a lot with the weeds and moisture retention. We'll do this for this year until we can go with something more like what we've got going on here in the garden by the house where we're putting down organic material. We'll put down cardboard, we'll put down grass clippings and any other organic material that we have and uh, helps keep the weeds down, um, helps retain the moisture and anywhere you look underneath that stuff, there's earthworms everywhere, which is really good for nutrient cycling and helping that water to infiltrate the soil. It's great. And so we went with this thin plastic uh, weed mat for this year, but next year we're gonna transition into more like the lasagna gardening type thing. So she's got uh, several different varieties of peas. She's trying to grow okra, which is a Southern thing. It's, I don't know if it's gonna make up here, but it's actually, there's actually some okra coming in on these plants. And so we'll see how that works. Um, she's got corn, lots and lots of tomatoes. This hoop house right here, she's got sweet potatoes, which is another southern thing, but I think inside the greenhouse, they should do pretty well. They're actually doing really, really good in here. So she planted like 700 onions or something crazy. She's got different varieties of onions. Some of them will uh, be long-term storage and some of them, you know, we'll eat right now. We've got a whole 80-foot row of peppers here, more okra peas and then over in the other garden there's the cabbage and the broccoli and herbs and all of that fun stuff and then down here at the end there's like winter squash um you know what i'm just gonna let liz talk about the garden she knows much more about it so when we first got up here and started these gardens we were using actually like a rainbird uh, style sprinkler which is incredibly inefficient for water now i'll show you where our water comes from here in a little bit but i'll just say for right now we don't have an unlimited quantity of water so we have to kind of somewhat be selective in how we use it and so that just wasn't sustainable so then we went to soaker hoses the soaker hoses worked okay but they tended to water unevenly and then the uh the voles tend to chew them up and so this year what we're trying is this this drip tape here i've never tried this before but it seems to be working pretty well you've got these pieces of tape right here that's got little perforations in them every foot or 10 inches or so and then all that comes off of a main line right here i think we got this from like grower solution or something i can't remember where it came from but seems to be working pretty good the one issue that i see with it is it expands and contracts as it gets warm and cold and so if you stretch it out tight and stake it down when it contracts at night when it cools off it'll pop the hoses off of the main line and so you got to kind of leave them loose that's what i'm figuring out anyway 
So out in front of the garden here, Liz has got all of her lavender plants and the bees just go crazy over that stuff. So we've got a stack of, these are tops from cedar telephone poles. We get down in the neighboring town here. They have a pole mill down there in Julieta. Uh, but the plan with these poles is to eventually have this type of a kind of a log, log cabin style uh, bed all the way around you gotta I mean there's crap laying around all over the place if you live on a farmstead or a homestead like you're gonna have unless you have a groundskeeper you're gonna have stuff laying around those picture perfect uh, magazine cover uh, little homesteads that you see on the cover of Mother Earth News those things don't exist so I just want to go back here and, and, and show you our well where we get our water so this little place here, this is our, the pump house. Uh, Liz has all of her food storage stuff in there. It's like, it's just lined with uh, canned goods that she's done. Let's see. This is uh, where all of our water comes from. It's just an open hand dug well. Uh, there's a pipe that goes all the way to the bottom. It's probably about 25 feet deep or so and all of our water comes out of here. Um, so the water level's down just a little bit in this thing right now, but there's still plenty of water in there. Uh, give it a day or two and it'll fill back up. Can you walk on that thing without the top rope yet? Oh, <laughs> getting there. So Finn got a slack line for his birthday. And they've been practicing their balance. But we've got, uh, Liz started us a little orchard back here. So we've got, oh, apricots, cherries, uh, plums, got uh, apples. And then over here, I've got a, uh, some of you Southern guys will rem uh, recognize this. We've got a little white oak tree over here that I started from an acorn. There's uh, an acorn, if you're not from the South. Uh, there's a couple of them right in here. So I'm hope, hopeful that uh, here in a few years, they're gonna start making acorns and give the deer a little bit of food. So it's been several years since I've done one of these videos and a lot has changed about the place. And one of the things that's changed, I think I'd mentioned this in the last video that I did, but we've got an Aspen stand right here behind me and Aspen, will regenerate through clonal um, reproduction. So it basically sends up suckers off the roots. And so you can see we've got one age class back here, which is the big trees. And then out here, we've got another age class. So the roots have come across and they're shooting up all these little shoots. Now, historically, this has just all been hayed in here. So it, this would be mowed every year, which kept the trees, the aspen trees from coming out into the, uh, into the field here. But, I quit mowing it and now the aspen are kind of slowly working out and I like that. I, I love aspen trees. It's a um, nice cool spot. The, the deer fawns love to get in there and um, it wouldn't surprise me actually if we jumped up a little fawn out here in this, uh, in this grass. See how tall the grass is out here this year. It's just our neighbors are cutting hay over here. Here's uh, one of the trees that I planted a, a year or two before uh, we planted everything, and they're doing pretty good. These are these are ponderosa pines, so maybe another 20 or 30 years, these pines will be up and provide the, some turkey habitat and places for the deer to hide. So this stuff right here, this is called teasel. It's actually an invasive species, but uh, these little cone head things make seeds and they hold those seeds all winter. And the quail love these things, quail and pheasants, um, because they, they hold those seeds. And when there's a snow cover out here and there's nothing else available for them, they can go in there and, and bump against those uh, the th uh, teasel stalks and it just rains seeds down on top of the snow and they'd be out there pecking all throughout that teasel. So another thing that I mentioned 
in the last video several years ago was this what i've got going on here these are old christmas trees and all i did was call up home depot like the day before christmas and said hey if you guys have any old christmas trees like after christmas save them for me because i want them and not only did they save them for me but they actually delivered them here to the place an hour from the home depot store because my understanding is anyway that if they don't do that they have to put these things in their trash compactor and then they have to pay someone to take them away which is i guess uh costs them who knows what but i guess they figured it was cheaper to load them on a truck and bring them out here and dump them off than it was to deal with them themselves now what i wanted them for was making these brush piles and windrows and it's really cool because the first year so I, I brought these out here dumped them off in december right after christmas the next spring i came out here and there were rabbits in here that were using it uh, for nesting and raising their young the quail you can hear quail in the trees over here we have california quail here the quail get over here and get into this stuff and so i this is something that i want to expand and do more of um and so that's that's what i'm going to be doing every year i'm calling home depot and say hey i want your trees so we've got some more trees and shrubs here that i planted kind of on the border of our place um, this is actually woods rose this is one of the the native roses that we have here it makes a little hip uh let's see what we've got we've got golden currants oh there's actually some currants here currants are one of the first things that come in in late spring early summer really good for game birds quail pheasant turkeys love them got Finn hiding in the bushes back here you gonna come get some currants so this has been a great place for the kids to grow up I mean they've got the woods back here they've got all the freedom to run around unsupervised build forts uh tinker with things they can go in the shop anytime they want uh build stuff i mean this is exactly the way that i grew up so all of these shrubs along in here they're they're way overhead high and i planted them probably five years ago and for this part of the country that is really really good growth and so these are doing so well that liz decided that she wanted to come and plant some blueberries over here and so we took a piece of weed mat, uh, laid it out, cut some holes in it, and she's got some blueberries that are growing in here that are actually doing very well. Dad, look at this. Man, that's a, that's a good one. So these roses here, once we remove the weed mat, they will spread out from the roots and start shooting up little, uh, little suckers and they'll make like rose thickets. And that'll provide cover for rabbits and quail pheasants and then also all these little flowers here are going to be rose hips and that provides good winter forage for them so we've got a little 3d course set up back here and it starts uh right here so i've got about a 25 yard shot from my back door right there to this little mule deer target i shoot this thing almost every day i've actually been shooting this target this same target for like five years and it's just now getting to the point where I can my my arrow tips will uh, will poke out the backside, so I'm going to have to replace that one uh, before too long. One of our apple trees. It's got it's loaded with little apples, so looks like it's going to be a good good year for apples. Um, I think we're going to try to make a an apple press this year with a garbage disposal. I want to. I'm looking into trying to make like a hydraulic press, but I don't know. We'll see. See if I have time. <clears throat> so we're heading back into the woods. Now we've got, I don't know, a couple acres of woods. Got my little shack that I, uh, a reproduction of what I stayed in and in, in British Columbia, the boys and I did that, I think last year. <clears throat> got a pig target here so basically shoot that mule deer out of my back door I've got a, a bear next then I'll shoot this 
uh, mule deer and then standing at the mule deer I've got an uphill shot at this pig which is oh maybe 22 yards or so uphill and then got an antelope here maybe a 10 yard shot flat on this antelope and then I've got a pretty cool shot at a whitetail back here that's you got to shoot through the grass it's nice having this 3d course back here because I've got very realistic shots I've got uphill shots downhill shots short shots long shots if you look right through here you might just be, barely be able to see this this whitetail but you have to shoot through all of this stuff and kind of just visualize where <clears throat> where your arrow is supposed to impact but I think it was probably two or three years ago we had a black bear come into our woods back here and really tear up my targets he chewed the legs off of them you can see the claw marks all in the the rear end of it where he I guess he snuck up behind it and tried to like attack it but it was all bent over the legs were all bent but you can see we've got a pretty good stand of uh dug fir some ponderosa pines over here and i don't know several years back we borrowed a sawmill from one of our neighbors that's a pretty good log right there and cut some timber from here and use that timber that's what we used to build the porch and we redid the inside of the house and then also a lot of the stuff that we've used on the inside was old salvaged lumber that came from a uh, a garage that was built in the early 40s and so some really cool old growth really wide board with, with tight tight rings in it but liz and i went down there several years ago tore the whole garage down salvaged everything and repurposed it so all around the edge of our property here we've got uh, a windbreak or shelter belt it's probably about 60 feet wide but we've got ponderosa pine um, we've got syringa or mock orange which we have right here um, this right here is skunk bush sumac more currants uh, woods rose hawthorn plums apples choke cherries uh, there's actually some high bush cranberry down here uh, and probably some other stuff we planted a whole bunch of stuff but i think we did this in 2011 you see how how big the trees are which some of you that have pines in the southeast are looking at these and <laughs> you know trees planted in 2011 and down there are on the verge of being harvested for pulpwood there's a hawthorn that we planted um, we've uh, we've got a few turkeys around just uh, just the other day we had a hen and some poults come walking down the road just right by the house you know one of the biggest challenges that we have up here with with growing trees and shrubs like this is the deer are just hard 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 on them they come and they browse the new growth off and so we are doing something different with our our tomatoes this year as far as like tying them up we've used these wire cages for years but uh liz doesn't want to use them anymore so i just went ahead and and brought them all up here and i'm gonna eventually put these over the shrubs to to try to curtail some of the deer browsing but um just haven't got around to it yet it's one of those things that is on the to-do list so i think last i did this i had mentioned something about planting all of these fields with pines and that's something that we've done since the last video you can see them kind of poking up right here they're not these are only two years old um, so they're not really poking up they're easy to lose you can't really see them in the grass at all but i think within a couple of years they're going to be poking up here and give us a little bit more cover for the deer and turkeys start holding a little bit more wildlife in here so one other thing that we did is we we came and interceded some forbs 
and uh, these right here this is small brunette it's not a native but it's one of the uh, desired I guess introduced species in a mix like this um, just adds a little bit of diversity helps um, hold some insects which are good for the uh, upland game birds in particular we seeded a bunch of other stuff in here but small brunettes the only only one that took there's a few places with some uh, sand foin and milk vetch some cone flower that came in but for the most part the meadow brome that was in here was just uh, too much competition for it and the rest of the stuff just didn't get established some sand foin All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed the quick little tour around our place here, but um, we like it. You know, it's a little small house, little farmhouse, got, got the land here. We don't have any neighbors that we have to worry about offending. You know, if I want to go out and shoot a shotgun, I can do it, or I can walk around in my underwear if I want to. Um, but uh, anyway, that's our place. We'll see y'all next time.